Kosala, the kingdom was ruled by Dashrata, King Dashrata himself. He had three wives, Kausalya, Sumitra and Kaikeyi. The kingdom was very beautiful. It was very well planned. It had broad highways and good broad roads within the city too. The capital city of Kosala was called Ayodhya, that which cannot be won over by war. So the kingdom had no enemies. People were very happy. They were content. They were happy doing their work. Everybody did their work as worship. People were very dedicated to the kings. They, had, they were filled with riches and never thought of what other, the other person has. They were very successful in their own careers. They never felt the lack of anything in their lives. There was no greed. There was no theft. There was just one shop which was not there in the entire of Kosala kingdom. The shop which sold locks. People didn't have the need to lock their doors. They were just, they used to spend time in the parks in the evening. They used to do their jobs during the day. And there was no one who ever thought of doing anything which was bad. People lived in their dharma. The king punished people if and only if they made a mistake. No one was given an unjust punishment. And the punishment was accorded to the person's capability. So there was no flat punishment of, you know, hanging the person or getting hundred uh, whiplashes. None of that. The punishment was accorded to the person's capability. There was problem solving, which was done based on the crime. So King Dashrata had a beautiful... Um, vice men as ministers and the chief minister if we may call so was Sumantra. Sumantra was also a confident he was his charioteer and he was a very wise man. He knew the future he knew the past of the kingdom and he knew what advice to provide the king in the times of need. So in such a kingdom, there was just one person who felt the lack of something. And this one person was King Dashrata himself. He just felt the lack of a baby to play with. He felt he did not have progeny to carry on the kingdom, to take care of the kingdom. So he went to his guru, Vasishta, and told him that he wanted to do an Ashwamedha Yaga as per the prescribed text and get a child. So Vasishta was very happy to hear this and he blessed him instantly that this should happen immediately. And he gave him certain specific instructions on how to uh, find a piece of land and how to procure material, which materials need to be procured and how a vrat has to be taken up in order to perform the Ashwamedha Yaga. As soon as King Dashrata took instructions from his Guru Vasishta, he who shone like Indra himself, told his ministers that this is his wish and these were things to be done. And the ministers went on to do his bidding immediately. His queens took up the Vrat along with King Dashrata. It was very important that the play, uh, the uh, place was big the play, the, uh, to accommodate as many people as, uh, as they came in. Everybody was provided with gifts and food. And the, uh, the Yaga did not happen overnight. It was not a one day affair. It was an affair of one year, one whole year, right? So anybody who came in was invited, was provided food and nobody was uh, insulted in the Yaga. If there was any wrongdoing in the Yaga, it would have adverse effects for King Dashrata himself. So everybody made sure that the Yaga Shala was purified. Everybody made sure that the people who came in were satisfied. 
everybody made sure that um, there was no one who was left behind without being invited. So when the Yaga was in full force, full, uh, was was going on in full force, King uh, Sumantra advised King Dashrata about Rishishringa. Now Rishishringa was a sage who is the son of Vibandaka. Vibandaka was a Muni who thought who, he can protect Rishishringa from the rest of the world and brought him up within the forests. So like many of us parents who think we need to be very protective about our children, Vibandaka also brought, him, uh, brought up Rishishringa within the forest, making sure that he has no human contact. Rishishringa learnt the Sanskrit verses from the Vedas Tarali. He did the uh, Agni Puja along with his father. And he knew nothing beyond that. His father would collect wood. His father would collect fruits and vegetables and roots from the forest and would bring it to Rishishringa. Rishishringa would enjoy the, uh, would partake of those and go back to doing his father's bidding. <clears throat> During one such day, uh, time, um, the king of Angadesha, who is called Romapada, had made a mistake during his yaga. And because of that, the place had become dot stricken. There was no water, people were dying, animals were dying, and he didn't know what to do. He called the sages and asked, what is it that I need to do to make sure that things come back to normal? The sages said, you need to bring sage Rishishringa into your kingdom and that will sort things for you. He will bring rain when he walks into your kingdom. So they were looking, uh, so the king heard about uh, sage Rishishringa from his ministers about Vibandaka, how protective he was about his son and he was really worried on how to implement this suggestion given by his gurus. So then they made a plan that he, they would send some dancers beautifully dressed like the celestials and make them stay in a place which was not very far from the hermitage of um, Rishishringa. So, uh, Rishishringa. So one day when Vibandaka had gone out to fetch some uh, fruits and vegetables and roots, these damsels walked in as if they were from the heavens and offered him sweets. Poor Rishishringa thought it was, these were fruits from the heavens and that's why they tasted so um, sweet. And he took them. He thought these damsels were from heaven and he treated them like guests. So after having done all that, he felt like seeing them again. And the next day, he went to the same place where he had seen these damsels. They invited him and said, why don't you come to our home? I'll take you there. He thought he was being taken to the heavens and he went along with them to uh, the Angadesa. The moment he set his foot inside the Angadesa, there was rain. There was rain that just poured nonstop. And the people were happy finally. People were happy that they had water to drink, they could live, and the place flourished. <clears throat> so, the next thing that the king did was he got Sage Rishishringa married to his daughter Shanta. He did not want Rish, uh, uh, Rishishringa to leave the kingdom, and therefore he got him married to his daughter Shanta. K uh, Sage Vibandaka came back and he was looking around for Rishishringa. Because of his tapas, he got to know that uh, Rishishringa has come into Angadesa. So while he was coming into Angadesa, all the farmers, the, uh, the uh, normal people who were in the kingdom, went and prostrated before him one after the other saying, Thank you so much for sending Rishishringa here. It is because of him that we are, uh, we are all alive today. Look at my cattle. They were all dying. They are alive today because of your son. Look at my farm. How green it is today. It is because of your son. All my crops were dying. Oh, I was about to die because of thirst. And thank God for your son that he came here and we are all alive today. When all the people started praising his son, 
his temperament started cooling down this was one of the king's strategy in uh, for handling uh, the angry sage so when he came and when he walked in and he entered the uh, the premises of the palace uh, he asked sage rishishringa and his daughter shanta to get dressed like the newly wed and go and prostrate to uh, prostrate at the feet of uh, sage with uh, sage vibandaka so the king uh, when the king asked them to do that and they went and fell at the feet he had to bless them with auspiciousness so when that happened the king romapada stood behind them and he asked asked him for forgiveness he said the state of my kingdom required me to do something like this i'm sorry for what i did but i couldn't do anything else to save my people thinking of the larger good sage vibandaka did not get angry he let go of his anger and he blessed the couple and the kingdom he just said one thing to uh, sage rishishringa or his son he told his son remember whatever happened today whatever good has happened today is because of your tapas do not let go of your tapas for anything all material pleasures can remain your tapas has to go on with that advice sage vibandaka left the kingdom so having said the story sumantra said such a rishi should come in and do the yaga for the progeny so he was invited and he headed the putra kamishti yaga so as soon as the ashwamedha yaga was finished dashatha himself went and invited sage rishishringa from romapada's kingdom romapada king romapada was a friend of king dashratha and when dashratha told him his uh, wish to have shanta and rishishringa in his kingdom for the sake of this yaga king romapada readily agreed and sent them along with that they started uh, they came and stayed for a while and then started the yaga the queens gave special attention attention to shanta and the rishis spent good time with king uh, with uh, sage rishishringa so with all of this the beautiful yaga began and at the end of it there was a divine being that came out of the agni with a golden pot and a silver lid covering it sage rishishringa asked king dashratha to receive it and king dashratha was in so much of joy that he received the pot as if he was carrying his newborn baby his eyes were filled with joy with joy and he with tears of joy and he went directly to his wives to partake of the prasad the prasad was a payasam and he gave half of it to his first queen kaushalya the other the out of the rest of it half of it he gave it to sumitra and half of the remaining was given to kaikeyi whatever was left inside the pot was given to sumitra again with that the yaga and the prayers for the progeny was over now it was waiting they waited for one whole year and the children were born the princes were born in the kingdom tatas chadwadashe mase chaitre navami khetitau nakshatre aditi daivatye swocha samsteshu panchasu graheshu karkate lagne vakpata vinduna sah prodyamane jagannatham sarvaloka namaskritam 12 months after this uh, uh, pa- uh, after partaking of the prasad in the chaitra masa navami tithi punarvasu nakshatra shri rama was born he was born with five grahas which were exalted Gra- uh, and the it, in the next star bharata was born and the next star lakshmana was born and then was shatrugna so all the four children were born in that order 
with that today we conclude the birth of the princess of ayodhya sitaram